Well, we are in the seventh inning, and I think we should have a seventh inning stretch. If anybody would like to stand up and give an applause to Dara as well. <laughs> and they call that a standing ovation. I, I, uh, it was interesting watching all of you during uh, Dara's introduction and, and talk about the romance. It's funny how all the women were smiling and nodding their head. So two key events in the retirement industry happened in the last year. Game changers. First one was that for the first time in over 40 years, individual retirement accounts in terms of total asset value surpassed 401ks. 7.6 trillion versus 6.8 trillion. And the reason for that is, once again, blame it on the baby boomers. So at 10,000 retiring a day, last year, $350 billion came over into individual retirement accounts. And the importance of that, again, as it ties into all of this, we think that's gonna be one of the largest single driving forces in this industry. So I spent most of my career at Merrill Lynch. I managed about 350 million in assets under management every day. My job, my career, my licenses were on the line, depending whether the market went up or down. And so much of what I did was asset allocation. So if we take the American Investors Association standard, the average investor is about 50 years old. They have about 100,000 in assets that are split according to their uh, portfolio analysis, about 50-50, 50, 50, 50 equity, 50 fixed income. And so for that, you have the opportunity to get about a blended 6% return, eight in equity, and a wonderful one to 2% in fixed income. With that, you get a 16% volatility in downside loss. If over the next 30 years, the expected time horizon for a 50-year-old is about 80 years old, they would enjoy a growth without any additional capital input of about just a little under $600,000, not, not too bad. But we're talking about the, the, implement, the implications, excuse me, of these new micro alternative assets and what that would look like. So we took a blended return of six to 8% for consumer loans, eight, 10 to 12% for small business loans, and 12, 14, 16%, maybe even greater in the real estate side of things. That gave us a blended return of 11% and look at the difference. Almost two and a quarter million dollars by simply taking out the low returns of one to 2% and bringing in micro alternatives and taking away the volatility. The other great impact is doing this in a tax deferred account numbers being about the same. So you're looking at about a fourfold increase by making investments in a retirement account. So beyond the stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs, we see in this new alternative world, the peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding, and we'll touch on just briefly some of the new micro alternative uh, investments coming up. The typical self-directed IRA investor has, it, has changed. The uh, typical profile right now, industry-wide, is about an $80,000 IRA account, 60, 70% in real estate, 10 to 20% in precious metals, and the remaining in private equity and private debt. That's overwhelmingly changing. But again, as, as Gene had mentioned earlier, 535,000 self-directed IRA accounts versus almost 49 million IRA accounts, again, 350 billion, looking for places to put that money. Today's self-directed micro investor is looking for that high-speed solution. Uh, interesting statistics, millennials will check their portfolio 10 to 12, maybe as many 15 times a month on their mobile phone, as opposed to the baby boomer who checks it one to two times online via CNBC or their E-Trade or Fidelity account. So in my journey over the last five, almost six years now in trying to pioneer the self-directed IRAs to these crowdfunding platforms and investment sponsors, 
overwhelmingly they wanted automation integration education and of course the viable retail solutions to that the challenge with the self directed iras process very cumbersome for six maybe eight weeks to actually imagine taking eight weeks to purchase an ETF on E-Trade. Pricing just doesn't work with the model of $10,000 spread across 30, 50, 100, 200 loans or notes with pricing of four to $500 per note per year. So number one is education. You know, I speak at many of these events and I try to stay relevant uh, and talk about the new regs and overwhelmingly, um, I'll have some very sophisticated people come up and say, tell me again, is it better to do a rollover or a transfer? And if I liquidate the assets in my Fidelity account in order to fund a new account, are there taxable transactions? So education overwhelmingly is still the most important thing we, we need to do. Secondly, uh, is expanding that to some of the new apps, really exciting uh, app that we're, we're, Darren and I are familiar with and are looking at, such as Worthy, is a forced savings app, kind of turning the retirement industry upside down. So the average American household has about a negative 1% savings rate. The average millennial has an 11% negative savings rate. How do you save for retirement? So the approach is doing it through consumption, through expenditures, through roundups. The interesting thing about Worthy, however, is that they're not gonna just use it in a taxable cash account with your basic vanilla ETFs. They're actually gonna use these new alternatives in retirement accounts. And lastly, in terms of the technology, about 18 months ago, I wrote an article in MarketWatch uh, predicting the end of this self-directed IRA. And that's not because I had any great vision but it's simply being in the trenches for five years, calling on the Ron Subers saying, hey, did you know you can use a retirement account for your new crowd-centric alternatives, et cetera, et cetera, and hearing that, you know, Jim, we think 50% of our investors should be using retirement accounts. But until you can automate and integrate and become price effective, we're gonna be an accommodation at best. So along with that, I personally did not have the, the vision or the know-how or the capability, but what I did envision was that automated process that the industry was asking for. And so today, the second largest change in this industry in the last 40 years has been the extinction of that self-directed IRA, but simply now an account where side by side, you can have taxable investments as well as retirement accounts you can have these alternatives, as well as your taxable stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. And that vision belongs to our final speaker, Todd Yancey, CSO, IRA Investments.